Congressman Jim Himes, a Connecticut Democrat, sits on the House Intelligence Committee, which led those impeachment hearings, and he joins me now. Congressman, um, I suppose not surprising, but I'm curious your reaction. Well, it's it's you can't be shocked by Donald Trump anymore, um, but obviously very sad. It's sad because the pardon power it's a it's a it's a very unusual power, right? It is completely unchecked, and it's designed to give our system of justice something that it doesn't naturally have, which is mercy. You know, so somebody who has lived an exemplary life uh, but made a mistake, uh, somebody who was imprisoned for life because they sold crack on the street three times. That's what it's designed to do. In this case, of course, the president used it at, at, in the very best reading to do a favor for somebody who provided the president with the one thing that he understands, that is to say loyalty to him. And in the worst case, and this is something we need to look into, this is a reward for not singing. Uh, and, you know, you can imagine it's, it's Roger Stone, it's Paul Manafort, it's any one of the half dozen of people very close to the president who undoubtedly have stories to tell about the president's behavior who are being told, stay quiet and we will fix this. Yeah, it's interesting, you know, even uh, Bill Barr in his testimony when he was uh, nominated to his position as attorney general, who had written that infamous memo saying the whole Mueller thing is a fishing expedition ridiculous, um, he said, yeah, like, the pardon power is constitutionally unchecked, but even though it's constitutionally unchecked, there's some legal thinking that it's not, you couldn't, for instance, pardon yourself, or in, in, in Barr's terms, offering a pardon to a co-conspirator as a reward would plainly be illegal. But we kind of know that's what the president's lawyer did. I mean, here's, here is the voicemail back in November 2017 of John Dowd leaving this uh, for Flynn's lawyer. Take a lesson. Hey, Rob. Um, this is John again. Um, Maybe I, I, I'm, I'm sympathetic. I understand your situation, but let me see if I can't state it in stock of terms. If you have, it wouldn't surprise me if you've gone on to make a deal with, and uh, work with the government. Uh, if, on the other hand, there are, there's information that implicates the president, then we've got a national security issue. You know, then, then you know, we need some kind of heads up. Remember what we've always said about the president and his feeling toward Flynn. You know, that still remains. But. It's not really even that subtle when you listen to it in context. No, no, it's not. And again, um, sadly, we're going to have this conversation, I think, a lot in the next uh, 56 days in which this president remains president, uh, because there are any number of people, close to a dozen people, very close to Donald Trump, all of whom probably have the same kind of information that Michael Cohen had on Donald Trump. Michael Cohen famously actually did speak, wrote a book, uh, you can count on the idea that Michael Cohen will not get a pardon, but Paul Manafort, Roger Stone, who already had his sentence commuted, any number of other people. This is all about the president um, trying to insulate himself from accountability. And I would point out, Chris, that in some ways the president is probably um, buttressed by President-elect Biden's um, approach here, which is um, to say that, you know, we're, we're going to reunite the country. Um, and, and by the way, I'm not saying that's necessarily the wrong thing to do. I think the country has a lot of restitching that needs to happen. But, you know, it cannot possibly be lost on Donald Trump that Joe Biden uh, is not out for blood on this issue. So I think we're going to see uh, more pardons, hmm. more blatantly corrupt activity in the coming weeks. You know, there's a weird irony here that I've been thinking about since the news crossed, which is that. When you go through the timeline, right, the president took all these extraordinary, inappropriate means to, to, to put the thumb on the scale for Michael Flynn. He has everyone leave the room and says to Comey, can you, you know, directly ask the FBI director, like, would you cut, cut the guy a break, right? Fires the FBI director when he doesn't do it, right? He then gets his, his attorney general, Department of Justice, for an unprecedented reaching in to withdraw a guilty plea. Right. That leads the judge to go through, you know, basically go and get fire and get an outside lawyer to file a, 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 a brief for the court to say, like, is this OK? 
And in the end of all that, he just uses the pardon power that he always had constitutionally. He could have done this day one. <laughs> he could have done it the day after he fired him instead of all the like corrupt subterfuge. No, no, you're 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 absolutely right. And, and you know, this isn't the most competent group, uh, the, the most competent gang of people uh, that we've seen. Thank God if, if if Donald Trump had some competence about him, we might be in a much more serious situation than we are in right now with his you know, demands that this election be overturned. But but the point is, there's only one thing that has ever mattered to Donald Trump, and that is deep, deep loyalty to him and to him only. I mean, from the moment that he talked to Jim Comey and said, I need your loyalty, and Jim Comey said, whatever you think of Jim Comey, Jim Comey pushed back on that. And the president said, no, I need your loyalty. That is what defines this president. Um, and it has warped our government institutions. Bill Barr, the attorney general, very early on, not a dumb man, he learned that lesson. He turned the Department of Justice into a defense uh, firm, a legal defense firm for Donald Trump. People like John Ratcliffe, people like Richard Grinnell, who are directors of national intelligence, turned our intelligence community into a political support mechanism for the president of the United States. This, of course, is what the new president, Joe Biden, is going to have to fix when he takes office on January 20th. All right, Congressman Jim Himes, thank you so much for coming on tonight. Have a great Thanksgiving. Thank you, Chris.